Coming up on tonight's Faith versus Culture, former Mumford & Sons member Winston Marshall speaks out on cancel culture. We'll have more coming right up. To have a sex before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me there's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. There are problems of sin and habit that cannot be solved outside the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, welcome to Faith versus Culture. We have a fascinating conversation today about cancel culture and redemption and uh, finding renewed purpose. I'm joined by my colleague, Billy Hallowell, and our guest today, Winston Marshall, a former member of Mumford & Sons. Uh, Winston, how are you doing today? Trey, I'm very well, thank you. And uh, thank you both, you and Billy, for having me on your show. Well, thanks oh, for of course. Thank you so much for being here. I want to ask you, just kind of digging in on your story, and I know you've spoken a lot about this, but for people who don't know, obviously you ended up walking away from the band, you ended up leaving, and um, a lot of interesting things led up to that. But it all started with a book um, and your your support for a book. Can you take us through those events that sort of, I guess, initiated the controversy that you faced years ago in the first place? Yeah, sure. So this was in the pandemic and life really came to a, a, a standstill. Um, initially, there was some peace to it. I was reading all the books that uh, I hadn't had time to read from um, Tolstoy's War and Peace to Mao's Little Red Book and everything in between from things that I hadn't had to read and then things that were interesting me at the time. But one of the books I posted about was by American conservative journalist Andy No, documenting far left extremism in the United States, documenting the BLM riots of 2020, and mainly focusing on Portland and Seattle, the burning of the federal building there. When it came to the riots, it was, you know, the 19 deaths in the first 14 days of the riots, that kind of stuff. Now, this somehow, this tweet, uh, I only had about 3000 followers, but in my country, and I think in this country, it went up all the trending lists on Twitter. I'd never experienced that before. I'd never even... <laughs> really fathomed what that's like. And it was just like an onslaught, um, not just to me, but the people around me, people I was working with. And, um, I, I, you know, real abuse. So they were changing my Wikipedia from Winston Marshall is a banjo player to Winston Marshall is a fascist. And wow. it was just like in, totally insane. And anyway, I would, I'd been open to, perhaps I didn't know everything about the subject. And anyway, my bandmates were very distraught and upset and so I wanted to kill the story and I wanted to make it right I wanted to protect them and um and under considerable duress uh I you know I issued an apology and um in the period that came after that I really got to, to grips with the the topic itself and I, I came to the conclusion I'd been wrong to apologize actually um those things were bad. Those aforementioned, aforementioned riots were bad. The, the, the behavior of far left extremists in the States were not good things. And I felt like I was in any way, in, in some way, part of the lie that either that they were good things or that they didn't exist. And that um, apology really sort of hang around my neck like a, like a sort of tablet of shame. And I came to the conclusion, I mean, there's a bunch of other things were happening simultaneously, including the author of the book was attacked again by Antifa thugs in Portland. And the video of that went out online, horrific uh, footage and him escaping in a, into a hotel somehow. And, and I just felt like I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore. And at the same time, to have my opinion would, would be, bring shame, you know, big problems rather on, onto the band. So I was in this situation where really the only thing I could do to protect both my conscience and my integrity was to issue an attract a retraction of the apology, but have to leave the band. But, you know, uh, this isn't, a, I, I can, t I speak to you now, 18 months later, this isn't a sort of a woe is me story at all. I, the Lord works in mysterious ways. And, and uh, I feel like it's now a duty for me 
to speak up on these issues because I think a lot of people can't. And one one of the things I experienced when I published my resignation letter or the, the letter when I quit the band, I got hundreds, if not thousands of people expressing uh, their understanding of the sense of self, self-censorship. And I, I, I think the self-censorship is something that right now, or certainly over the last few years, is a very, very um, prominent phenomenon uh, that uh, there are just topics that people think it's better to keep keep them shut up than actually speak it because it's, it brings too much hassle to, to speak it. So, can I, can I pause you there for a minute? Because how, how do you, you know, there are people who are listening to this, watching this right now who are terrified to speak. They have silenced themselves and they're looking at what happened to you and other people. And that, and that just, it's like this vicious cycle. It just feeds that. What do you say to those people who are petrified to speak and they're silencing themselves? Well, firstly, I'd uh, offer, um, it's a good question. I, 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 I would, one thing that bothered me was that when I initially apologized, I got a lot of attacks, people saying like, don't never apologize. Um, uh, you know, you're a coward. Now I, the, the anti-work crowd came after me, go, now I hope you get canceled. And the anti-work crowd are just as bad as the work crowd, by the way. Um, and, or, or at least the extremities of them are. And, um, what I'd say is that it, there's a lot of pressure. You've got families to support. You've got your careers you've worked up for a long time. You've got mortgages. Life is life is hard, and there are other things in life that are worth protecting. So, so I understand if you feel like you can't speak, and, and that's a difficult decision to make. Um, the the one thing that I've I'm now enjoying is making myself building a life so that actually. I can speak and that I'm I'm trying to build a life in, in a way that I'm sort of quote uncancelable to use the jargon of the of the age. Um, and and so I can say what I think. And and that's not for everyone, you know. It's not for everyone it's not everyone's duty to to sort of get embroiled in arguments and fights and, and that it's neither does that suit everyone's disposition or um, you know, character. Um, that, actually, I'll tell you something that I found really enlightening. I was speaking to Ignat Solzhenitsyn, who's Alexander Solzhenitsyn's son, and as well as being a highly accomplished classical musician in his own right, he's also probably the leading expert on his father's literature and his father's work. And we were discussing Live Not By Lies, which was the essay that Solzhenitsyn Sr. published as he was exiled from Moscow in 1974. And... In that essay, he said, and, and that essay really struck me, like that when I, before I quit the band, that I'd read that like five or six times, like it was really affecting my conscience. Uh, that, that really, that, that was the thing that was really, uh, what, one of the other factors is really sort of hitting my soul, pounding it. Um, but what uh, uh, Ignat Solzhenitsyn Jr. Uh, t- told me is he said, it's, you, don't, you don't have, it's not about making a great stand. The interpretation of that essay is what Alexander is saying is, just don't participate in the lie. So you don't have to stand up and, and make a stance and, and, and sacrifice necessarily. But when there are things that are not true, don't participate. That it's, it's as simple as that. And I think actually as a bare minimum, that's a pretty good standard. That means that you don't have to like, you know, say, you know, sh- sh- quit your job or whatever. But if you're made to go along with things that you don't agree with, just quietly say no. And some people will be forced into an, uh, that sort of position. I actually feel like I was forced into that position. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would have willingly chosen it. Um, but so fate might take you on a certain <laughs> journey there. Uh, but I think the bare minimum is not to participate in the lie. I think that's a pretty good standard. Hmm. Yeah, no, I think that that is the case. And we're going to talk about that and so much more on the other side of the break. So we'll be right back with more with Winston on faith versus culture. Well, welcome back to Faith versus Culture. We're joined now by Winston Marshall. Winston, you mentioned in the first segment a little bit about uh, spirituality and feeling like, uh, like you were being spiritually attacked, uh, obviously in a negative way, uh, when all of this happened 18, 19 months ago. 
tell us a little bit about how you handled that, how your faith maybe helped you process some of that. Well, that, speaking of the match, match of the spirits, and I appreciate it in the first half of this conversation, I, I brought that topic up myself. So I, 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 from, I put myself in this situation. <laughs> it's often very difficult to articulate um, these things. So I'm, I'm certainly in danger of misrepresenting how I think, or, or perhaps some of my thoughts are unformed. But I, I, um, I would say that, uh, yeah, the, the experience of being at the center of that um, hellish that on that hellish weekend for me um it felt like an it's, to be honest it was seeing my mother's reaction that that really really affected me and and she's actually quite a spiritual woman anyway so she was probably more sensitive um to it but you know it's not just it's attack it's attack of reputation as i said they come after your wikipedia then by this by the second day or third day it's in all the newspapers and then it's or it's a segment on the view and on Tucker Carlson and, and everything. So it just felt like a complete um, swarm uh, of, of, of hornets and, and um, you know, coming from every angle and, and then your friends start calling you up and, and your colleagues and it's just everything sort of implodes. I had a dream at the time that I was on an airplane and and then the airplane just stopped mid-flight and then just went backwards and just started plummeting backwards down it felt like everything was just coming apart so um it, it yeah i was it was a very i was very sensitive to what was going on at the time um and but and it feels weird quoting kanye west now after the last sort of few months he's had <laughs> but he said something um which which i think at the time i found helpful is that if you fear god you fear nothing else and and that's not to say that i necessarily think you should fear god i mean i do think in some aspects you should fear god but i think god is love so it's not to say that god is a fearful. it's reverence reverence is it's like that deep that's respect right. right yeah revere god and you'll fear nothing else that's a better word i prefer that yeah um and for me trusting him and so and that still it still happens now i still get these little swarms but trusting him and putting it in his hands is actually totally liberating and has has been a point of sucker, a point of, um, uh, it's been, you know, it, it's kept me, it's kept me um, free from those worldly worries. It's not, it's not to say I don't also like ha I don't also have my weaker moments, obviously, where, you know, I worry about and I have anxiety about certain things, but, but, but my faith has, has certainly uh, helped me store, you know, get through this very stormy few years. I know I'm babbling and bumbling. No, you know what? I think only you're because it's, so, it's quite hard to articulate, you know, you're pro you're processing it, right? I mean, this is, you know, it's very much, yeah, it's been 18 months, but a lot happened and a lot continues to happen, right? I think when you have this dream and you're living this life and you're thrown out of that, you know, like you were saying, this wasn't something you chose. Um, it was a path you were put on and now here you are. I've got to ask you, you know, coming off of the spiritual side of things, looking at culture, when you look at what happened to you for a simple tweet about a book that some people don't like, how do you think we allowed culture to become so chaotic and almost cartoonish that somebody's opinion on something means that they're going to have to literally append their entire life just because a group of people didn't like it? How did we allow this to happen in your view? That's a good question. I think on the, uh, on the, you can look at actually the, the music industry. And I think what happened to me in some ways uh, shows how the music industry is very small as is the creative industry and and there's a lot of group think and so the the fit the the, the bare you know the, the the way in which i've sort of been ostracized from that that group but at the same time i'm now working at the most respected political magazine or one of the most respected political magazines in, in the country it's it sort of shows how much of an echo chamber um, the music industry is. But I would also say that all industries are an echo chamber because all communities form their own echo chamber. That's kind of, no, that's a normal human experience. That's not to say it's a good thing. We should always be trying. I, I pledged a few years ago to myself to read every book that I get recommended because it was the only way I could ensure I don't get 
stuck in an echo chamber. Now, it's, I still get caught in my own echo chamber, obviously, uh, but um, it's, I think it's a normal thing to happen. And so now as a society, how we've got into that, a few things at play here, uh, as I already mentioned, the, the pandemic drove everyone nuts and, and because it was it was a nutty time, like it was unbelievable stress that we were all under and everyone was probably stuck and glued to their phones and we just didn't act normally. Um, so then there's a, a, a few topics sort of seem to be particularly um, problematic. <laughs> off, <laughs> off limits, if you will, off, off limits. limits. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but I also think, I don't think it's a modern phenomenon. So I think it's a human phenomenon. And in fact, in de Tocqueville's Democracy in America, he describes this, I forget exactly where, but he, he writes about how there are some political topics which are perfectly normal to discuss. And then at a certain turning point, people who hold those ideas need to be uh, cut out like a cancer. So he uses language like that or something like that. I need to revisit that. But there's a great tablet magazine article uh, writing about that as well and uh, describing that. Um, and um, and uh, if you remember, for example, an, a, a, a version of this was that you look at someone like Trump before he was president, he was hosting SNL. He was on the television. And then suddenly he went from like, you know, in perfectly accepted in, in high society, if not a bit annoying to people to like the devil. And, and that, that, that there was a moment and it changed probably when he became president. Um, but, uh, you know, there are historical examples of, of cancel culture, Galileo, um, although Galileo also, uh, also the myth goes retracted his, uh, 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 his apology, a uh, person muove, and, and you know, so indeed, the Earth does move around the Sun, uh, and um, and it's Socrates, and um, so it's it's really it's not a modern phenomenon. I just think that the combination of social media, the pandemic, and a few other issues has made it has just made that particular. Uh, demon of human nature rear its its head again in this in this period. Yeah, no, I think there there's a lot of truth to that because I I do think that there's nothing necessarily new, right, to to culture. It it presents itself differently, I think, with each generation and each iteration of of society. But I want to ask when the rubber meets the road, when we face things like this. Obviously, you've faced a lot of public adversity that you've had to deal with in a public way. How has it maybe changed you or challenged some of your perspectives and how you might handle a similar situation should you find yourself in the same place uh, again yeah well one thing I, I i i do is that when i see it happening to others i i don't uh, i i withdraw I, I don't um judge them because firstly i know that they must be under extreme pressure uh secondly i i avoid engaging in ad hominem as best i can and anything personal because that's just unnecessary when we're in in the in the in the when we're dealing with issues we should never let it get personal it's not personal it's it's issues and you should act in good faith assume that everyone wants a better world and we're all engaging these conversations because we all want a better world so uh that's one thing and then uh, another thing in fact this happened last weekend bill maher did a segment about woke culture going too far and um and used my story but he only used the bit where I read the book and then apologized for the book and, and sort of ridiculed me for it without mentioning the bit that I retracted and quit the band. Um, but that um, now, I'm, which I'm, I'm fine with, and, and I, you know, I tweeted the correction to, to him, but I'm in, in a position where that, that stuff can't, I've got nothing they can take from me anymore. They took, they took what they could. And so in a way I'm, I feel untouchable, but I also have, you know, it's I, you just got to have faith. You got to you got to give it up to up to him uh, and and um, try and act as he has taught us to act. I I, I think um, trust trusting him is is a pretty key element to do with anything like that. 
Well, I got to tell you, your story is incredible. Your perspective is incredible. And we appreciate you coming on the show today. You got to come back again. Billy, Trey, thank you very much for um, having me. I hope I haven't been too boring for your listeners. I'll say one last thing. Do it. Go for it. If your listeners did like hearing me, I <laughs> can I invite them to listen to my podcast, Marshall Matters. And uh, I also have just launched a sub stack uh, called The Win Stack, uh, which you can find. And these are part of my new uh, endeavors now that I'm rebuilding my life. And there might be little things there for your listeners they might enjoy. <laughs> You've been, you have been amazing. And everyone else, make sure you just stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break with more Faith versus Culture. We're back with more Faith versus Culture on the CBN News Channel. That was Winston Marshall. Trey, what was your what was your take? I mean, what a crazy story. I mean, I, I think the thing that's so fascinating about his story is something that really is a common thread throughout so many people who have been canceled at one point or another is they were blindsided by it, right? They had no idea that it was coming. Uh, but I think it, it, his story really just shows resiliency, right? Because he could have given up and kind of left the public sphere and, and just lived a private life. Uh, but instead, he's chosen to kind of lean in and say, look, I was wrong to have apologized. I was right with what I said initially. Uh, and he's kind of found new purpose and, and renewed passion uh, in his life, which I think is fascinating. And I think it's also encouraging for people who face similar circumstances. Obviously, we're not all celebrities, but we could face a similar circumstance in our sphere of influence. And I think bouncing back and finding our purpose, whatever God has for us, is important. And I think Winston has shown that that is possible. Yeah, absolutely. And what he said about trusting God, a great message, even when hard things happen, embarrassing things happen, whatever it is, good or bad, always trusting God. All right. With that said, we're taking one more break and we'll be back with more faith versus culture in just a moment. Welcome back to Faith versus Culture. That is all the time that we have for this episode of the show. Make sure you stay tuned to future episodes on the CBN News Channel.